Okay, so today I thought maybe we'd do something a little bit different and go through some September 2020 new releases. See if there's anything I want to buy, any series that are continuing, just anything cool. Um, so I have this book release date site pulled up. I use it fairly regularly. Um, let's just go through and see what we like. I know this Naomi Novik book is going to get a lot of hype. <laughs> a lot. Um, let's see, A Deadly Education comes out September 29th. Lesson one of this. <laughs> Lesson one of the Scholomance. Learning has never been this deadly. A Deadly Education is set at Skullamance, a school for the magically gifted where failure means certain death for real, until one girl, Elle, begins to unlock its many secrets. There are no teachers, no holidays, and no friendships save strategic ones. Survival is more important than any letter grade, for the school won't allow its students to leave until they graduate or die. The rules are deceptively simple. Don't walk the halls alone, and beware of the monsters who lurk everywhere. Elle is uniquely prepared for the school's dangers. She may be without allies, but she possesses a dark power strong enough to level mountains and wipe out millions. It would be easy enough for Elle to defeat the monsters that prowl the school. The problem? Her powerful dark magic might also kill all the other students. So I'm definitely picking this one up. Uh, <laughs> anything set at, like, a magical school, I tend to like, or at least like to read. Also, this cover, ugh, so beautiful. I feel like this is another one that's going to be compared to Harry Potter, though, and I really get sick of people making comparisons to Harry Potter because they're never accurate. <laughs> a Curse of Gold. I think this is a sequel. Yes, it's the sequel to A Touch of Gold, which I haven't read, but apparently is the story of the daughter King Midas turned to gold. That sounds awesome. This is the final saga of a cursed queen, a vengeful god, and a dazzling kingdom in the balance. Also, beautiful cover. Uh, comes out September 22nd. I don't know. I would have to buy the first one, because I haven't read it, but it might be worth it. Probably gonna keep this one on, in the back of my mind. A Thousand Questions by Sadia Faruqi? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it comes out September 8th. I don't read a ton of middle grade, uh, but this one, this one might be cute. It's a set in Kar Karachi? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. The middle grade contemporary novel follows American-born Mimi as she searches for her absent father and Pakistani-born Sakina, who balances her dreams against her family's needs over the course of a summer. That one looks cute, too. Okay, I just pulled up a couple different tabs. This is a YA romance release, which I really don't like to read at all but if you're into YA romance September 29th is in this releases this sounds kind of interesting actually it says Kyle and Kimberly have been the perfect couple all through high school but when Kimberly breaks up with him on the night of their graduation party Kyle's entire world upends literally their car crashes and when he awakens he has a brain injury Kimberly is dead and no one in his life could possibly understand that <sighs> that would be a rough one um, this is a mystery thriller, and now she's gone by Rachel Housel Hall. Uh, looks like it releases September 22nd. See, here's where I, I'm conflicted, because I like to read a synopsis, so I know if it's a book I want to read. However, with thrillers, a lot of the times you get spoilers in the synopsis, and I think the whole point of a thriller is you don't know what's supposed to happen. That's part of the journey. So I don't think I'm going to read the synopsis for this. Shouldn't be that hard to find if you want to read it. This is Aphrodite by Isabella Allende. It's a memoir and nonfiction. I, I have a love-hate relationship with memoirs. Some of them are really good. And then some of them, I'm just like, why do I care, why do I care about your life? 
<laughs> That's mean. I shouldn't say that. Uh, 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 September 29th, 2020. This might be some kind of re-release because it says first published December 29th, 1997. Sheesh. That's a while ago now. Let's see. Under the ages of the goddess of love, Isabella Linde brilliantly evokes and pays tribute to aphrodisiacs and the delights of sensual pleasure. A feast for the senses, Aphrodite includes family recipes, poems, stories from ancient and foreign, foreign literatures, art, personal anecdotes, and fascinating facts on the art of food and its effect on amorous performance, tips on how to attract a mate and revive flagging virility, musings on the smell and libido, a history of alcoholic libations, and much more. The stories from ancient and foreign literatures part sounds good. Uh, <laughs> the rest of it, I don't. Food and its effects on amorous performance. Mm, no, thank you. That one's probably not for me. Uh, I'm not sure about this. The As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole. This is book two in a series. My sister tried to read the first one. And she likes YA fantasy, and she couldn't get into it, so I might not bother with that. Uh, Blood and Honey comes out this month. It's the sequel to Serpent and Dove. I didn't read Serpent and Dove. My sister hated it. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> she, like, whined about it for a while. Uh, this, though, this is another children's and middle grade, but it's Jacqueline Woodson, and... She tends to be incredible. Uh, comes out September 1st, so actually not much longer to wait if you're interested. Says, For as long as ZJ can remember, his dad has been everyone's hero. As a charming, talented pro football star, he's as beloved to the neighborhood kids he plays with as he is to his millions of adoring sports fans. But lately, life at ZJ's house is anything but charming. His dad is having trouble remembering things and seems to be angry all the time. ZJ's mom explains it's because of all the head injuries his dad sustained during his career. ZJ can understand that, but it doesn't make the sting any less real when his own father forgets his name. As ZJ contemplates his new reality, he has to figure out how to hold on tight to family traditions and recollections of the glory days all the while wondering what their past amounts to his, if his father can't remember it, and most importantly, can those happy feelings ever be reclaimed when they are also busy aching for the past? I don't know, like, this one, and a thousand questions, they make me think maybe I should read more middle grade. Blood Moon, September 1st. Uh, oh, it's a YA novel about the viral shaming of a teenage girl during her seminar sexual experience with the quiet and lovely, oh geez, not seminar, during her seminal sexual experience with the quiet and lovely Benjamin, physics lover and astronomy fan Frankie gets her period, but the next day a gruesome meme goes viral, turning an innocent, intimate afternoon into something sordid, mortifying, and damaging. Oh my god, that poor girl. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna read it, but yikes, that would be so embarrassing. Uh, Bridge of Souls, apparently this is the third book in this Victoria Schwab series. I read, I think City of Ghosts was the first one. I'm not gonna continue it, but it comes out in September if anybody else is invested in the series. Dead Woman Crossing, that looks like another thriller. Dear Justice, I think this is some kind of a sequel to Dear Martin, which I did enjoy. Uh, Depart, Depart, that, hmm, maybe that's thrillery, don't look for me. I enjoyed Wendy Walker's other book, um, I think it's Emma in the Night. Uh, Dear Justice, let's see, comes out September 29th, oh, yep, sequel to the New York Times bestseller Dear Martin, incarcerated teen Khan writes letters to Justice about his experiences in the American prison system. So I'll probably get that, just because I enjoyed Dear Martin, and a lot of Nick Stone's books confront pretty heavy topics that need to be talked about but can be 
difficult to approach in the correct way. Um, and I like her work on Dear Martin, so I'd be interested to see what she does with this. Uh, depart, depart, contemporary science fiction. That's interesting. It comes out September 1st. When an unprecedented hurricane devastates the city of Houston, Noah Mishner finds shelter in the Dallas Mavericks baseball arena. Though he finds community among other queer refugees, Noah fears his trans and Jewish identities will put him at risk with certain capital T Texans. His fear t fears take form when he starts seeing visions of his great-grandfather Abe, who fled Nazi Germany as a boy. As the climate crisis intensifies and conditions in the shelter deteriorate, Abe's ghost grows more powerful. Ultimately, Noah must decide whether he can trust his ancestor and whether he's willing to sacrifice his identity and community in order to survive. Huh. That doesn't really sound like anything I've ever read before, so maybe we'll give that one a try. Don't Look For Me by Wendy Walker comes out September 15th. That's all I want to know. I'm buying it for sure. Early Departures by Justin A. Reynolds. Yep, Contemporary YA. Comes out September 22nd. Uh, I didn't... He says Justin A. Reynolds is the author of Opposite of Always. I didn't read that because I don't... I don't read YA Contemporary. I never enjoy it. With the exception, I guess, of a couple Emma Mills books and a couple of Casey West. Otherwise, it's just not really what I like. Um, but anyway, if you liked The Opposite of Always, Early Departures is coming out. Ah, this is a mystery thriller, too. Even if we break... Um, mm, mm, I don't know if I should even try to pronounce that author's name. I'm really probably going to butcher it. September 15th. Ooh, a shocking new thriller about a group of friends tied together by a game and the deadly weekend that tears them apart. That sounds good. Fable. Yeah. Girl on the cover is pretty. September 1st is when this releases. Welcome to a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it, where a young girl must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. As the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows, the sea is the only home 17-year-old Fable has ever known. It's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm. The next day, her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep her to herself, learn to trust no one, and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her. The only thing that keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island, finding her father, and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew. To do so, Fable enlists the help of a young trader named West to get her off the island and across the narrows to her father. But her father's rivalries and the dangers of his trading enterprise have only multiplied since she last saw him, and Fable soon finds that West isn't who he seems. Together, they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the narrows if they're going to stay alive. Oh, that sounds interesting. I think my sister might like this book, so I'm probably going to keep it open just so I remember to tell her about it. Uh, sequential art and graphic novel release. Interesting. Oh my god, I don't know which cover I like better. This one or this one? They both look really good. Comes out September 1st. Vamp is 300 years old, but in all that time she has never met her match. This all changes one night in a bar when she meets a charming werewolf. Fangs chronicles the humor, sweetness, and awkwardness of meeting someone perfectly suited to you, but also vastly different. That sounds nice. I think I'm going to read this. Oh, yes, this cover. Ugh. Floriography, an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers. That sounds fascinating. Comes out September 15th. A charming, gorgeously illustrated botanical encyclopedia for your favorite romantic, local witch, bride-to-be, or green-thumbed friend. 
The Language of Flowers is a full-color guidebook to the historical uses and secret meanings behind an impressive array of flowers and herbs. The book explores the coded significances associated with various blooms from flowers to for a lover to flowers for an enemy. The Language of Flowers was historically used as a means of secret communication. It soared in popularity during the 19th century, especially in Victorian England and the U.S., when proper etiquette discouraged open displays of emotion. Mysterious and playful, the language of flowers has roots in everything from the characteristics of the plant to its presence in folklore and history. Researched and illustrated by popular artist Jessica Rue, this book makes a stunning display piece, conversation starter, or thoughtful gift. I have to have this. <laughs> I think this might be one that I take a trip to like Barnes & Noble for so I can flip through it first just to see what the pictures look like. If it's anything like this cover, oh my god, it's going to be absolutely stunning. I think at this point, I'm just going to look for covers that intrigue me. Mythopedia, that intrigues me. Night of the Mannequins, I bet that's like creepy weird. This Queen of Volts, I'm pretty sure this is a third book in whatever this series by Amanda Foody is called. I read the first one. And, like, I kind of like it, but I also kind of remember thinking that some of the characters were far too similar to some of the characters in um, Six of Crows. So I don't know. I think I'm going to have to reread the first book in this series, if I even still have it, and then decide how I feel about it. And if I, like, decide I enjoyed it, then maybe I'll pick up the next couple books. Right, historically inaccurate. It's a YA contemporary, which again, I don't really do YA contemporary. Oh, it's a Wattpad book. Interesting. It comes out September 29th. Okay, it's definitely about immigration. Which is interesting because I feel like with all the push there's been to have books that are more inclusive. I don't usually see books on, like, fiction books on immigration. This one, after her mother's deportation last year, all Soledad Gutierrez wants is for her life to go back to normal. Everything's changed. New apartment, new school, new family dynamic, and Sol desperately wants to fit in. When she joins her community college's history club, it comes with an odd initiation process. Break into Westray's oldest house and steal a fork? <laughs> Oh my god, that actually sounds kind of funny. Maybe this is one that, if libraries ever open back up, I'll see if I can get from the library. In the Dark, The Science of What Happens at Night. Okay, first off, this cover, I love. It's really cute. Comes out September 1st. I think this is like a kid's nonfiction. Yes. However, <laughs> I like a lot of nonfiction that's written for children because there's a lot of topics that I just don't know enough about to be able to handle one written for adults. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. Uh, find answers to questions such as why do we dream, how do bats use echolocation, what blooms in the moonlight, why do stars twinkle... Thoroughly researched and vetted by several experts, this book covers multiple STEM topics, leading to tons of direct curriculum links in earth science, life science, and physical science. This is really cool. Maybe I'll get a copy for me and a copy for my niece. Maybe. Angela, if you're watching, is this something you think Addison would like? Mythopedia by Good Wives and Warriors. Interesting. An encyclopedia of mythical beasts and their magical tales. 15 September is the release date. From the West African fable of Anansi the Spider to, 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 to Tanuki, oh my lord, the sweet but troublesome raccoon dog of Japanese folklore, this encyclopedia of mythical creatures covers legends, tales, and myths from around the world. Oh, this, I, I hope the pictures are amazing on the inside. I want this super bad as well. Oh. Night of the Mannequins. Oh, it's a horror. I don't read much horror, but I feel like I should. 
It releases September 1st. A contemporary horror story where a teen prank goes very wrong and all hell breaks loose. Is there a supernatural cause, a psychopath on the loose, or both? I don't know. This is another one where I want to see somebody else talk about it before I make a decision. Punching the Air by E.B. Zuboy and Yusef Salam. I have read one other book by E.B. Zuboy. I think it was her Pride and Prejudice retelling that uh, if I wasn't trying to continually compare it to Pride and Prejudice, I liked it. I kind of wish she had just written the story and had less focus on the Pride and Prejudice retelling because I think the story she was writing stood out on its own really well. Oh my god, I hope it's not $40. September 1st, let's see. Oh! Interesting. From award-winning best-selling author E.B. Zuboy and prison reform activist Yusef Salam of the Exonerated Five comes a powerful YA novel in verse about a boy who is wrongfully incarcerated. Perfect for fans of Jason Reynolds. I'm a fan of Jason Reynolds. Walter Dean Meyer and Elizabeth Acevedo. Also a fan of Elizabeth Acevedo. Huh. Yeah, I think I might pick this up. Okay, fifteen ninety nine. That's much more reasonable than thirty nine ninety nine. I'm okay with that. Secret legacy. It's a paranormal fantasy. I don't tend to go paranormal super often, but one, I really like this color or this cover. Well, I like the color on the cover. Uh, it comes out September eighth. Family secrets shrouded in death, an ancestral home with secrets of its own, and a legacy of power she can't escape. Okay, I love books that have a house that is basically a character. I'm thinking like Mexican Gothic, where like the house was a character in the book. Um, that kind of. So I might, I might look into getting this one too. Man, September's gonna be heavy book buying month apparently so yeah I'm gonna keep this one in mind because that sounds really cool seance tea party I only clicked on this one because I thought the title was funny and I really liked the cover it's another uh, some kind of graphic novel I believe it comes out September 15th after watching her circle of friends f seemingly fade away, Laura is determined to still have fun on her own, so when a tea party leads Laura to discovering Alexa, the ghost that haunts her house, they soon become best friends. <laughs> That's cute. Jodi Picoult has a book coming out. I used to read her when I was a teenager, but her books would always make me cry. And as a teenager, like... I liked that, but as an adult, I don't want to cry. I have enough things in life to cry about without making the book <laughs> making things worse. Oh, see, I like this cover. I have not read um, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, but one, this cover is stunning, and two, this is a prequel, so maybe, possibly... I will be able to pick it up. Maybe I should just read The Pillars of the Earth first. Maybe. But anyway, it says, A thrilling and addictive novel from the master of historical fiction. I like historical fiction, so maybe I should uh, pick up The Pillars of the Earth first and then get my hands on this, because this cover, oh my god. It's like publishers know that we need pretty things in our lives this year, and they've just really stepped up their game. <laughs> Let's see. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I'm probably getting that. I need to read Matt Haig. Um, everything I've heard is positive. I hear he's, like, funny, which I could use in a book right now. I, I, I need something a little bit lighter. Oh, Amy Kaufman has a book coming out. I enjoy her. 
uh, Roshani Tchotchke, The Silvered Serpents. If you liked, oh gosh, The Gilded Wolves, I think, was the first book in this series. Then the sequel's coming out in September. I, I read The Gilded Wolves, but it wasn't my, fa- my favorite thing in the world. Um, but I'm kind of in the minority on that one. Just run through these really quick because I've been recording for a while now. I'm either going to have to post a long video or cut a lot of stuff out. We'll see. Ah, Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. I read, I think Fix Her Up was the first book in this series. I'm assuming this is part of that series um and fix her up was cute i liked it i don't read a ton of romance but for what it was it was fun and it was funny um and then her second book was in that series i can't remember what it's called but i heard bad things about it but this one might be this one might be good. It says, in Tessa Bailey's latest rom-com, two enemies team up to flip a house, and the sparks between them might burn the place down or ignite a passion that neither can ignore. Oh, my. Whew. Midnight Library, my Matt Haig, comes out September 29th. That's a ways away. I'm filming this on the 12th, so... Mm, it's a bit long to go. Let's see. Between life and death, there is a library. I like books with libraries. And within that library, the shelves go on forever. That's a dream come true. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived, to see how things would be if you had made other choices. Would you have done anything different if you had the chance to undo your regrets? A dazzling novel about all the choices that go into a life well lived from the internationally best-selling author of Reasons to Stay Alive and How to Stop Time. That sounds fabulous. I like already figured I would be getting it because I've been meaning to read Matt Haig for a while and anything with a library in it, I'm probably interested in. This is The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I like um, the Illuminae file, the Chron- I, the Illuminae series. I don't remember exactly what it's called. Um, and that was Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So I've never read, I know Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner have written another book together, but I don't remember what that's called because I didn't read it. Um, but you know, if you read it and you liked it, this is coming out September 8th. The Talented Miss Farwell by Emily Gray. Oh wait, Emily Gray Tedrow. It comes out September 29th. Catch Me If You Can meets Patricia Highsmith in this electrifying page turner of greed and obsession, survival and self-invention that is a piercing character study of one unforgettable female con artist. Yes, please. (laughs) At the end of the 1990s, with the art market finally recovered from its disastrous collapse, Miss Rebecca Farwell has made a killing at Christie's in New York City, selling a portion of her extraordinary art collection for a rumored 900% profit. Dressed in couture YSL, drinking the finest champagne at Trendy Balthazar, Reba, as she's known, is the picture of a wealthy art collector. To some, the elusive Miss Farwell is a shark with outstanding business acumen. To others, she's a heartless capitalist whose only interest in art is how much she can make. But a thousand miles from the Big Apple in the small town of Pearson, Illinois, Miss Farwell is someone else entirely, a quiet single woman known as Becky who still lives in her family's farmhouse, wears sensible shoes, and works tirelessly as the town's treasurer and controller. No one understands the ins and outs of Pearson's accounts better than Becky. She's the last one in the office every night, crunching the numbers. Somehow, her neighbors marvel. She always finds a way to get the struggling town just a little more money. What Pearson doesn't see, and can never discover, is that much of that money is shifted into a separate account that she controls, borrowed funds used to finance her art habit. Though she quietly repays Pearson when she can, the business of art is cutthroat and unpredictable. 
But as Reba Farwell's deals get bigger and bigger, Becky Farwell's debt to Pearson spirals out of control. How long can the talented Miss Farwell continue to pull off her double life? Yeah, I might have to look into getting that one too. We'll see. We'll see. I can't buy everything. Uh, the Tolstoy Estate comes out September 2nd. Powerful, densely rich, and deeply affecting. In the first year of the doomed German invasion of Russia in World War II, a German military doctor, Paul Bauer, is assigned to establish a field hospital at Yas Yasnaya Polyana, the former grand estate of Count Leo Tolstoy, the author of the classic War and Peace. There he encounters a hostile aristocratic Russian woman, Katerina Truzbitskaya. Sure. A writer who has been left in charge of the estate, but even as a tentative friendship develops between them, Bauer's hostile and arrogant commanding officer, Julius Metz, starts becoming steadily more preoccupied and unhinged as the war turns against the Germans. Over the course of six weeks in the terrible winter of 1941, everything starts to unravel. I'm, if I'm in the mood for historical fiction in September, definitely probably going to grab this one. Not that I've read any Tolstoy. I should. I really should. But, oh my god, his books are just so long. Mm -hmm. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Interesting. I don't know if Christopher Paolini's done anything since the Aragorn series. I never read that. I don't have any intention to. But this... Um, I think this is supposed to be like a sci-fi. Yeah, science fiction. And I'm pretty sure it's adult, which is interesting. It was supposed to be a routine research mission on an uncolonized planet. But when xenobiologist Kira Navarez finds an alien relic beneath the surface of the world, the outcome transforms her forever and will alter the course of human history. Her journey to discover the truth about alien civilization will thrust her into the wonders and nightmares of first contact, epic space battles for the fate of humankind, and the farthest reaches of the galaxy. This sounds good. Uh, I could use a little more sci-fi in my life. I've been lacking that which is stupid because i have like the next oh my gosh i might have all eight books in the expanse series and i've only read the first three i should probably get on that oh my gosh i just realized that i should probably put all these titles and their release dates in the description box and that is gonna take forever oh what have i done well i mean we only have one more page <laughs> Uh, more thriller looking things. This looks good. And this cover looks interesting. Okay, two more and then I'm definitely done because good lord, it's been 30 plus 36 minutes. And that doesn't even count what I recorded before I had to stop because the dog started barking. White Ivy by Susie Yang. September 8th is the release date. A dazzling debut novel about a young woman's dark obsession with her privileged classmate and the lengths she'll go to win his love. Ivy Lynn is a liar and a thief, but you'd never know it by looking at her. Raised outside of Boston, she is taught how to pilfer items from yard sales and secondhand shops by her immigrant grandmother. Thieving allows Ivy to accumulate the trappings of a suburban teen, and most importantly, to attract the attention of Gideon Spare, the golden boy of a wealthy political family. But when Ivy's mother discovers her trespasses, punishment is swift, and Ivy is sent to China, where her dream instantly evaporates. Years later, Ivy has grown into a poised yet restless young woman haunted by her conflicting feelings about her upbringing and her family. Back in Boston, when she bumps into Sylvia Spire, Gideon's sister, a reconnection with Gideon seems not only inevitable, it feels like fate. Slowly, Ivy sinks her claws into Gideon and the entire Spire clan by attending fancy dinners and weekend getaways to the Cape. But just as Ivy is about to have everything she's ever wanted, a ghost from her past resurfaces, threatening the nearly perfect life she's worked so hard to build. That, <laughs> that sounds really good, too really good and I feel like I don't read nearly enough books where the main protagonist is Asian so that could be good just for expanding my reading 
diversity, I guess is the word. Ah, it's horror and fantasy. Yeah, that cover looks like it could be a little horror, horror-esque. It's gorgeous, though. Ugh. I want to, like, have this stenciled onto my bookcase or something. September 5th is when it releases. Powerful shipping magnet Evelyn Perdanu lives a tight, contained life, holding herself at a distance from all who would get close to her. Her family is dead, her country is dying, and when something foul comes to the city of Delphinium, the brittle, perilous existence she's built for herself is strained to breaking. When one of her ships arrives in dock, she counts herself lucky that it made it through the military blockade, slowly strangling her city. But one by one, the crew fall ill with a mysterious sickness, an intense light in their eyes, an obsessive behavior, followed by a catatonic stupor. Even as Evelyn works to exonerate her company of bringing plague into her besieged capital city, more and more cases develop, and the afflicted all share one singular obsession. Her. Well, that sounds creepy. Cool. Probably going to get that one, too. <laughs> Alright, well, that's the end of the list. There were a lot more books on there. I just don't see any need to look at them. If I tried to, like, go through every single one, we'd be here for absolute hours. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, comment down below if there are any books that I didn't look at that you're interested in reading. Or if any of these are sparking your interest. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.